And when he leans out of his saddle and looks down into this cut, what he sees are bones of a gigantic size that he's never seen before. 12,600 years ago, on a windswept hillside in what is now Montana, someone placed a small body into the earth. They dusted his skin with sacred red ochre, the color of life, of blood, of rebirth. Around him they laid over a hundred exquisitely carved weapons and tools, a treasure that would have taken countless hours to craft. Then the Ice Age faded. Mammoths vanished. Civilizations rose and fell, and beneath that hill, the child slept, untouched, for more than 12 millennia. There's a Clovis burial site in Montana of two infants. When scientists finally touched his bones in 2014, they didn't just find a skeleton. They found a message written in DNA, a story that shattered one of archaeology's most sacred beliefs, that the Clovis people were the first Americans. For nearly a century, School books and documentaries told a single origin story. That sometime around 13,000 years ago, humans crossed a frozen bridge from Siberia to Alaska, chasing herds through an ice-free corridor into a new world. It was neat, simple, a straight line from Asia to America. But the truth, as revealed by ancient DNA, is anything but simple. The Clovis child, known to science as Anzic I, carried inside him the genetic memory of a people born not in America, nor Asia, but on a vanished continent called Beringia, a land now drowned beneath the Bering Sea, where isolation forged the ancestors of every indigenous people, from Alaska to Patagonia. This is the story of that lost world, of the child who waited 12,000 years to tell it. Before we uncover how his genome rewrote the origins of the Americas, make sure you subscribe to Stone and Bone, where we bring humanity's forgotten truths back from the ice and dust of time. In 1968, construction workers near Wilsall, Montana, uncovered a burial site unlike anything ever seen in North America. At first they thought it was an ordinary ancient grave, until the tools appeared. More than 125 stone and bone artifacts surrounded the tiny skeleton, each one a masterpiece. Fluted spear points, beveled blades, and ivory rods polished to a mirror sheen. To craft them all would have taken hundreds of hours, suggesting that this was no ordinary child. When scientists examined the bones decades later, they found them stained with red ochre, a sacred pigment used across Ice Age Eurasia to symbolize the breath of life. Radiocarbon dating placed the burial at roughly 12,707, plus or minus 27 years before present, making it the oldest known ceremonial burial in the Americas. Then came the real revelation. In 2014, a team led by Eska Villersleff at the University of Copenhagen extracted fragments of DNA from the child's tiny bones. What they sequenced was nothing less than the oldest complete human genome in the Western Hemisphere, and inside those genes lay the roadmap of a migration that began tens of thousands of years earlier, on a land that no longer exists. Before that discovery was published in Nature, tribal elders from the Crow and Blackfeet nations were consulted. They requested that the child, their distant relative, be returned to the earth with ceremony. So, after the genome was decoded, Anzic I was reburied on the same Montana hillside, surrounded by song and prayer. He had waited 12,000 years for his story to be heard. Now, his people carried him home. For most of the 20th century, archaeology lived by one origin myth, the Clovis First Model. It claimed that the very first Americans appeared around 13,000 years ago, hunters crossing an ice-free corridor that had just opened between retreating glaciers, spreading rapidly south across two continents. The evidence once seemed ironclad. At Blackwater Draw in New Mexico in the 1930s, excavators uncovered strange fluted spear points wedged among the bones of extinct mammoths. They called them Clovis points. And for decades, every new find seemed to confirm the stories. One migration, one culture, one beginning. But archaeology, like the land itself, hides layers. As carbon dating improved, new discoveries began to whisper a different tale. 
of people who were here long before Clovis ever struck stone. In Chile, the site of Monteverde revealed human settlements more than a thousand years older than Clovis. In Oregon's Paisley Caves, scientists unearthed fossilized human waste, coprolites, dated to 14,200 years ago, containing unmistakable human DNA. And farther north, in the bluefish caves of the Yukon, butchered animal bones pushed the timeline back an astonishing 24,000 years. Each discovery chipped away at the old certainty until only one question remained. If the Clovis people were not the first, who were? What do you think? Did the first Americans come by land or by sea? Drop your theory in the comments. I'm curious which side you're on. That answer would not come from flint or bone, but from the DNA of a single child who had slept beneath a Montana hillside for 12,000 years. To find the true beginning, we have to travel back beyond maps, to a world half ice, half wind, and long forgotten by the sea. During the height of the last ice age, sea levels dropped more than 120 meters, exposing a vast continent between Siberia and Alaska. Scientists call it Beringia, a landmass larger than India, rich with grasslands, mammoths, and wolves. Here, between 23,000 and 20,000 BC, a few thousand humans became stranded, cut off from Asia by glaciers and from America by ice sheets. They survived in isolation for nearly 10,000 years, long enough for their DNA to drift, to evolve, to become distinct from their Asian cousins. Modern genetics calls this the Beringian standstill. During this frozen exile, something remarkable happened. Two ancient bloodlines merged. About 65% of their ancestry came from northern East Asian populations. Hunters who had pushed ever northward through Siberia. The remaining 35% came from a mysterious group known as the ancient North Eurasians, a people once represented only by the genome of a 24,000-year-old boy from Malta near Lake Baikal. This fusion created a new lineage, the founding ancestors of every Native American people alive today. A genetic signature unique in the world. Asian, yet not Asian. Eurasian, yet transformed by millennia of Arctic isolation. Scientists confirmed it through the telltale pattern of cytosine deamination. The chemical scars that prove a genome's true antiquity. Each damaged base a frozen fingerprint of time. Picture it. A landscape of endless twilight. Families huddled in hide tents. Children born beneath auroras that never set. For 10,000 years, humanity paused there, waiting for the ice to break. By 16,000 BC, the world began to thaw. Glaciers retreated, and the vast continent of Beringia slowly drowned beneath the rising sea. For the people stranded there, this was the moment. A narrow window to move south into the unknown. Two routes offered escape. One was the long-taut, ice-free corridor, opening between the Laurentide and Cordilleran ice sheets. But the genetic trail tells another story, a faster one that clung to the sea. Along the Pacific coast stretched a living highway of kelp forests, seals, and shellfish. Small groups could walk or paddle southward, never far from food or shelter, the forgotten coastal migration route. Mitochondrial DNA preserves that journey. Five maternal lineages, A2, B2, C1, D1, and X2A, still found across indigenous populations today. The Anzic child carried D4H3A, a rare coastal variant now traced from Alaska to Chile. It's a genetic breadcrumb trail carved into time. Then came proof, impossible to ignore. At White Sands, New Mexico, scientists uncovered human footprints dated between 21,000 and 23,000 years ago, thousands of years before Clovis. People had already been here, so the real mystery isn't when they came, but how many times they came, and how many stories the sea has swallowed since. By 10,800 BC, a singular technology united the continent. Clovis craftsmanship. Their signature weapon, the fluted Clovis point, was a masterpiece of controlled risk. Each piece, three to six inches long, had deep concave bases and long flutes, 
thin channels struck upward from the base with one perfectly timed blow. Archaeologists call that strike overshot flaking. Miss it by a millimeter, and the point shatters. Mastering it required precision equal to modern machine. Clovis Knappers also pioneered a blade core system, shaping large stone nodules so each could yield dozens of razor-sharp flakes. They carried specialized scrapers for hides, gravers for bone and antler, and microblades for butchering, a complete Ice Age toolkit. Sites across the continent tell their story. Blackwater Draw, New Mexico. The discovery site of the first fluted points. Laner and Naco, Arizona. Kill sites where Clovis weapons still pierce mammoth rids. Galt, Texas. Over 600,000 artifacts. A full workshop preserved in stone dust. They even selected colored stones, banded chert, smoky obsidian, perhaps for beauty or ritual. And at the Anzic burial, hundreds of these points surrounded a single child, each one symbolizing skill, wealth, and belief. Clovis technology wasn't just a survival tool. It was a signature of identity. If you uncovered one of these flawless fluted points, would you keep it or return it to the earth? Tell me in the comments. I'm curious where your instincts lie. In 2014, the ANZIC-1 genome gave science its oldest complete genetic record from the Americas, and a verdict no stone tool could provide. His Y chromosome, haplogroup QL54, was ancestral to QM3, found in indigenous men across the hemisphere. His mother's line, D4H3A, linked him to early peoples along the Pacific coast, and even to ancient burials in Chile and Peru. But the revelation ran deeper. His genome showed direct continuity with living indigenous populations, particularly the Caritiana and Surui of Brazil. This wasn't a lost branch. It was family. The data demolished the Solutrean hypothesis, which claimed European Ice Age seafarers had birthed the Clovis. And it carried no European markers. Only the dual ancestry of East Asians and ancient North Eurasians shaped in Beringia. As geneticist Eska Villerslev put it, the Anzic boy is closely related to all present-day Native Americans. Later genomes, like the Upward Sun River infants in Alaska, Nature 2018, refined the picture. Several Beringian offshoots took different paths south, but all shared that same deep root. One child's DNA closed a century-long debate and reopened every question about how the first peoples truly arrived. Around 10,800 BC, the climate shifted again, violently. Within a single human lifetime, temperatures plummeted, glaciers surged, and rainfall patterns collapsed. The world froze. Scientists call it the Younger Dryas, a thousand-year return to Ice Age conditions. For the Clovis people, it must have felt like the sky itself had turned against them. Mammoths, mastodons, and giant sloths began to vanish. Short-faced bears and saber-toothed cats disappeared. In just a few centuries, over 70% of North America's large mammals were gone. What caused it? That question still divides researchers. Some point to the comet impact hypothesis. Tiny glass-like spheres and traces of platinum found in Clovis age layers across North America, PNAS, 2013 may mark an extraterrestrial airburst that darkened the skies. Others argue for climate chaos, abrupt meltwater pulses disrupting ocean currents, plunging the world back into cold. And some suggest human overhunting, the so-called Blitzkrieg hypothesis, in which expanding populations wiped out the very megafauna that sustained them. Whatever the cause, the Clovis culture vanished almost as suddenly as it appeared. Within a few centuries, its elegant spear points stopped appearing. In their place arose the Folsom culture, hunters adapting to new prey like giant bison. And farther east, new archaic traditions began to flourish, focused on fishing, gathering, and seed grinding, the quiet foundations of agriculture. But the genes of the Clovis child lived on. Through every adaptation, every migration, every story told beside the fire, his DNA continued to echo, in the people who still walk this land today.
long after the fluted points vanished from the plains, their makers' voices still echoed across the continent. In word, in blood, and in song. Today, the Americas are home to more than 300 indigenous languages, grouped into dozens of distinct families. Some linguists argue that almost all, except for the Nadine and Eskimo Aleut tongues, may descend from a single ancestral Amaran superfamily, a language spoken over 13,000 years ago. But after so much time, that language is untraceable. Twelve millennia of separation can erase nearly every shared word, yet the rhythm of migration still hums in the DNA. Modern genetic studies reveal that the same lineages found in the Anzic boy, Y chromosome QM3, and mitochondrial haplogroups A2, B2, C1, D1, and X2, A, still dominate indigenous populations from Alaska to Patagonia. In other words, the people of the Clovis world never disappeared. They simply changed, adapted, and endured. In 2014, when the boy's remains were finally reburied by members of the Crow, Northern Cheyenne, and Blackfeet nations, the ceremony was quiet, yet profound. It wasn't a scientific closure. It was a homecoming. Because for these communities, he wasn't a specimen. He was a child of their ancestors. Proof of what they had always known, that they had been here since time immemorial the science had finally caught up with the story. And yet, the story isn't over. For every answer the Anzic genome provided, new mysteries emerged from the shadows of time. How early did humans truly reach the Americas? The White Sands footprints, dated between 21,000 and 23,000 years ago, suggest people walked these lands long before Clovis. But where did those first settlers come from? Were there earlier migrations, now erased beneath the rising sea? Recent genetic studies, like those published in Nature, 2023, and Cell, 2024, suggest multiple waves of migration, even backflow from later Arctic population. The genetic story of the Americas, once thought to be a straight line, now looks more like a river delta, branching, merging, and winding through time. And while DNA speaks of bloodlines, it cannot yet tell us their voices, their songs, or their dreams. We still don't know what the Clovis people called themselves, what stories they told beneath the aurora, or what gods they whispered to as the glaciers melted. All we have are fragments, footprints, crests in ancient mud, tools shaped by steady hands, and a child who carried the memory of a continent in his bow. The Anzic child's DNA didn't just rewrite history. It restored a connection across time, across continents, across the fragile boundary between the living and the lost. He proved that the first Americans weren't visitors from Europe or Asia. They were the children of a land that no longer exists, a world called Beringia, now buried beneath the Bering Sea. From that frozen refuge came every nation, every language, every lineage that would one day call the Americas home. So when we look at the Anzic burial, at the red ochre, the fluted points, the careful hands that laid him to rest, we aren't staring into a distant past. We're seeing the beginning of our shared human story, of migration, adaptation, and memory written in every cell of who we are. Because in the end, the Clovis child didn't vanish into prehistory. He is still here, in the people who carry his DNA, in the stories that survived the ice, and in the land that remembers him. If this journey through ancient DNA and the origins of the first Americans fascinated you, share it, hit like, and subscribe to Stone and Bone, where we bring the lost worlds of our ancestors back to life, one discovery at a time.